Oh shit, it started. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm the it's the it's the hateful rant guy himself. I am I am he, he is I, I'm Lito Himothy. Chris hates that. That's horrible. No one <laughs> no one's going to call you Himothy. People are stealing my shit and you just let it happen and you just did, didn't even acknowledge it, and that's fine. Put that shit on. <laughs> Put that shit. Hey, 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 look, hey, look, I, I I'm very anti athletes having rap careers, but I ain't gonna lie. Now he got he he got a dance to go with it. That's just not it's just not it. But the song I ain't gonna lie, it got me. It's catchy. I'm gonna have to listen to the song, man. I um I try to I already sent it to you. Don't worry about it. This man here. Uh this is Chris Connor, ladies and gentlemen, the impatient boy himself. Um, this is Lito's rants. And um, man, we got an interesting, interesting one today. Uh, some shit to rant about, man. Uh, Chris brought something to my attention. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't have to talk about it. I'll just let it. I'll let Gil tell y'all. It's hard to convince me that Ginobili was an end. He was individually better than Jamal Crawford. So we'll look at the resume and say, "He got five rings." All right, let them play one on one. Who you taking? I'm thinking, I'm, I'm gonna take Jamal. Okay, so he's the better player. <laughs> right. So, and that's how I value it. Like, yeah, he, you know, Manu was amazing in that structure. But when we're talking about individual play, I can't say as an individual, you take the race, individual, he's not, he's not, he's not top five best six men of all time. I'm going to stop it right there. Interesting. A, he said a lot in a in a in a in that was 31 seconds. He said a lot. So this is the thing. Are we okay? He says he's the better player because he can be, he can beat him one on one. And he said individual like basketball isn't a one on one tournament. I love Jamal Crawford, bro. Listen, what I love. Do we, what are we doing? Hey, these conversations suck, Lito, because it always sound like to to big up one person, you got to shit on the other one. Yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to do that, man. I'm a huge fan of Jamal Crawford. Uh, I love his game. Probably top three, four handle ever. Top three handle ever. Uh, all all I, all I got is Kyrie and stuff above him. Um, uh, off the top of my head, uh, yeah. I. I I think he leads the league in leads the NBA in all time four up made four point plays. Yeah, plays. I I believe so. Is he Darius Miller was on his ass, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so first of all, we gotta we gotta go at one thing first, right? Because being the best one on one player doesn't necessarily make you a better player than somebody else. Especially if we're talking about a five-on-five -five game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, you know, look, like, I – and five – five should have been on – he should have been on this show because five, I think, to a degree, he do, he he agreed with Jamal. And here's the thing, right? And we got to we gotta call this what this is, at least to me, Lito. We, we, we feel like that um, – and it's a fact that the culture that we're brought up in especially once once you're talking about making it into a sport but it's really in all art when you come from certain situations um and you're taught the game in a certain way or you have to um you're in certain environments certain habits gravitate themselves to you even even the way you play the game and right. i you know i think that it's it's brought like some great shit, right? It's brought in one. It's brought the you know the appreciation of street ball, right? You know you don't that that ties into some of these open runs that people love. Um, the Drew League got a got a huge street element to it, not in the same breath as say as an and one, but a lot of this shit kind of you know to me it comes together. My problem and I, and I think the reason you know because Jamal Crawford is underappreciated, so sure. I think that's where this comes from. That's where this comes from. In some people's mind, they feel, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, they feel like if you drop Jamal Crawford, if you drop Lou Williams, or some of our some of the people that you know really balled out in that role that are black, you look at it and you say, they'd be able to do the same thing, if not better. I just feel like 
to what what Gil did was kind of you know kind of kind of shit on Manu like my like Manu could hoop my like Manu Manu could play not only could he hoop he could play the game of basketball really fucking well sure yeah like he yeah. just did and it's not an individual game it's it's simply not if it's a one-on-one -on -one, day many people in the history of the game and Jamal's problem is beating him we talking about five on five basketball Manu was one of the he was one he 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 didn't want to necessarily be a six man he simply accepted it I I I don't I mean he's not top five why so we he's he said top five student guys right he said he said if I remember correctly he said he wouldn't put he, oh, he yeah. wouldn't put Manu as a top five six man but why because he couldn't beat Jamal in a one-on-one -on -one? I think that's where you lose me let me see who is about time we pulled Jamal in multiple multiple different offenses if he's gonna get a bucket I know so it's like how you know like is he be, is can 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 Ginobili say he's better than Lou Williams as a six man so this is the thing So this is this is the thing. Um what what do you what do you determine what makes a player better? How do you determine that? What what is the what is what are we using to differentiate between the better player here? It's all subjective. It's all subjective. If you if if we talk in straight skill sets, like you know, I think uh the ability to break down an opponent, the ability to finish at the rim. Like, look, man, Ky to me, Kyrie took what Jamal Crawford was doing on a on a basketball floor in a lot of ways and fucking perfected it. He fucking perfected it at the point guard position. Sure. Yeah. Um Jamal maybe came in, if he could be in a different era, maybe, maybe uh, you know, an era further, further away, five, ten years later. We look at him different, but the streets, the streets embrace and love Jamal. I, 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 I just don't, I just don't see how if we're talking the full, the full scope of things, like because because he's a better individual, he has a better a better individual palette, dribbling, um, the you know the ability to create, the ability to do whatever he wants with the basketball. Really, Jamal could do it all. Because he's more talented, th th does that make him better than Manu in a game where you're playing with four other people? I feel like the thing that that holds as a basketball player, the thing that is going to hold Jamal back is that he accepted the role of coming off the bench, being a six man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, I mean, he, if you don't if you don't assimilate into a team setting, like what else? How else could I call it? You 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 never tried to, you know what I'm saying? And this is again, I'm not trying to shit on Jamal Crawford, one of my favorite players of all time. But Jamal Crawford is is, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Jamal played 20 years. Mando played 16. Jamal has scored 19,000 points. He should definitely. I mean, that's that's Hall of Fame type uh, points. Yeah. Uh. I mean. Damn. Okay, hold on, hold on. Maybe I have to apologize. Jamal has more assists than, than Manu, right? I didn't know that. I, how much? Who had the better? Because you told me Jamal played twenty years, right? Yeah. Manu played sixteen. Yeah. How many more assists does he have than? Oh, uh, he got five hundred exactly. I mean, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me. He has fifty four exactly. He has fifty more. Fifty four more assists. Yeah. So I mean, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't I mean, in a year, in a year, Manu in a in a additional year, Manu would have more. I mean, like this ain't even like it's just. I just don't like. I think what this what this really comes with, like to me, is that we are. We want to give Jamal his flowers, but we put Manu in the dirt. At the same time, yeah, because look, Jamal. Manu played with great players, and he played with one of the greatest coaches of all time. But Jamal didn't play with great players. 
He did. Ever in his career, he didn't play with other with other great talents. He didn't play with Tim Duncan. He didn't play with one of the greatest power forwards of all time. No. He played with he played with one of the greatest point guards. He played he played on a great Clippers team. I, you know, I, I mean, I, if I'm correct, they were they were Atlanta Hawk teams that Mike Bibby was starting over Jamal. Is that politics or what? Nobody like or what? Like why? See again, because there's no way to have this conversation without mm -hmm. without tearing down. And I don't want to do that, Jamal. Like 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 I love I love what Jamal means for the culture. I love what Jamal means for the culture and what he means for basketball and the influence that I think he has on others because there are players that look at him and can take that role. Like, do we do we even get a Lou Williams without what Jamal was able to do, right? Because there are other talented, talented guards that could have came off the bench that people act or, you know, that were undersized tools basically the people act like they couldn't find a way to make it work because they were just a score. I think I think Jamal elevated he so here's the thing. In my opinion, a six man position, I think that's a that's an award that nobody ever really wanted to win. And I feel like once Jamal started winning it, people people took pride in it. it Correct. Was, it wasn't it wasn't like such a a taboo quote unquote sort of an award to win. Yeah. And, I think people realize Jamal made it to where you could have a career, you could still be a quote unquote bucket getter without being the star of the team or a starter. Yeah. So I'm not here to shit on Jamal, but let me ask you this. Will you think Eurostep? I think you know, of Wayne Way and I think of Manu Ginobili. Those are the first two people that I think of. Yeah, man. I think I think I think he's underestimating, undervaluing Manu's ability to get a bucket too, though. Dog, Manu, dog, Manu was serious. Was like you know he was he was serious, and so bro, and so was so was oh, Jamal Crawford. Yeah. But yeah. you know, like one way one way or another, they both helped win games, and by you know by the setup, by the way that the situation worked, by system, by Whatever the case may be, Manu ends up winning multiple championships. Is that fair to Jamal? And Jamal's a humble dude, man. He's he, you know, he has that 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 Allen Iverson syndrome with him as a basketball player, you know, even even in as he gets older, in which he embraces the youth. He embraces people that come after him. He embraces the way that the game changed. So I like Jamal is one of my favorite, you know, I don't I don't I don't know if I follow him on Twitter, but I think I should. Like, you know, he's he's one of them. I was so happy when Five wrote that article about Jamal. Yeah, man. Me too. He definitely deserves his flowers, but I don't know if it's fair to compare him to Manu. Because to me, as a full basketball player, just when it comes to being able to like talent wise. I, I just if you tell me Jamal could do everything, anything he wanted to do with a basketball player, what we with the basketball in his hands, shouldn't you say that he should have been better? See, that's the should he have been more than a six man? These are the questions that I have. This is this this is this is my argument, and this is the reason this is the reason why this is the reason why I, I honestly like not to say I don't want to do this show, but I got so much respect for both of them. Right. Oh shit. Oh shit! There's just no way to have this conversation. See, he's the perfect. He got his Stone Cold Steve, Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt on. You know what I'm saying? What's up with y'all? Oh, that's man. crazy. That's crazy. You got this shirt on. Hey, bro, this is this what this like? This is a normal uniform for me, bro. What's good, man? My dog, my dog. Hey, yo, Lito, man, send send a link to to the Twitter, bro, so I could get on. Um, uh, I had to. I couldn't. I ain't know how to switch it over. But what conversation y'all having, bro? Manu, I mean, it's 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 kind of your fault, bro. We talking we talking Manu and Jamal. Listen, listen here, bro. I, I don't know what what people think. Like this man, are, are we serious right now? Manu, Ma, bro. All right, all right. Let's let's take all the star athletes. Take the Jordans, the LeBrons. Let's take all of them off the table. The Tim. The matter of fact, take is Manu Manu a Hall of Famer right now? Currently, 
I don't believe so yet. No. I don't, all right, let's take all the players that are not current Hall of Famers right now. If Manu's in that group, Jamal Crawford's in that group, and you said, I'm going to make a team, what player are you picking first? I, I promise you, it won't be Manu Ginobili. I would pick Jamal Crawford before I pick Manu Ginobili, bro. I'm picking Manu, Fab. Oh, Fab. my God. Fab, let me I, I, I love Jamal Crawford. I love I love Jamal Crawford as an individual talent. I love the, I love him as everything. And, see, and this is the problem. And, and me and Lita was talking about this. You can't give praise to one without making it seem like you you throwing the other one to the side. This ain't this ain't that. I think I think Jamal. If you ask me who's the better six man, I think Jamal's the better six man. Nah, well, I, think not Jamal a doubt. Crawford, I think Jamal Crawford the better player, bro. So I I I, 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 I so five. Tell me. Tell me this. Why why was he relegated on winning teams to having to be a six man? Why did Mike Bibby start on him? Was that fair? Like start start over him? It's why so did we look at him until as a six man over the rest of his career? I think I think the the politics of the NBA, I even said this in my article, like the politics yeah. of the NBA got in got in the way of Jamal Crawford's career. I ain't mad at that. Because he oh oh he will he'll shoot you out the game or He'll shoot you in the game. It's like oh, you had to regulate his shots. No, no. And when was the time Manu had the, the opportunity to put one play for Pop, right? Let's let's yeah. start there. Correct. That's two. He also had to play with two other Hall of Famers, right? And then the oh, the 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 cycle of really good basketball minds that that entered the Spurs organization. Jamal Crawford played for 20 coaches. He played for 20 coaches. I, I'm not let's he at his purest form, Jamal Crawford is basketball to me. At its purest form, he is he is the in and out. He is like if there was one thing that fear, if one thing to fear me playing basketball is LeBron James running full court down the court or Jamal Crawford dribbling backwards down the court. Because okay. one or two things about to happen. The, the same thing about to happen. A highlight about to happen. I just don't know where it's gonna come from with Jamal Crawford. Mm -hmm. At least LeBron is gonna try to go dunk it. I don't know what's about to happen in Jamal Crawford's book. I'm not here to say you wrong. I listen, we having a conversation based off you saying that because okay. I think that there's a there's an argument, there's an argument your side. See, what happens in these in these conversations is that like if someone takes the argument that is that is uh that isn't as favorable, you are attacked. And right. I think that there are Jamal, Jamal has an argument. As a basketball player, and me and Lito talked about this, Jamal can do and was as talented as almost anybody. Like right. I, he could do anything he wanted with a basketball. What we we talking about a bag? Yeah. Arguably, arguably had had one at least, to me top five bag in the in the history of the game. Imagine Jamal Crawford playing basketball in this generation, not that the tail, problem. not the tail of that generation because it was all predicated on the big men and and Tim kind of you know revolutionized the game. Like all right play off me and I'll, and I'll score my points, but I'll also assist you. And like, that was a whole different generation, like a whole different generation of basketball, which is okay. I'm not saying manager nobody sucks. That is not my, that's not my premise. Like he, he gonna be a hall of famer. No, Manu was good. I got, re I was fans of the San Antonio Spurs team. I remember Manu coming off the bench. Like I, I, I remember it all. Like, yeah, he could have started on 80% of the teams in the NBA at that current time easily. So, <laughs> but that doesn't say like he's better than, in my eyes, Jamal Crawford because that's just not how I see basketball. This a, this a, this is a, this a tough conversation because you can have you the conversation you having about Jamal you can have about a lot of guys that were that were supremely talented. Yeah, the game. I think I think Rod Strickland is better than Steve Nash. I ain't mad at that. I think that's the same fucking conversation. I'm not well. Isn't it like like all right? You talking, you talking about like a basketball? Isn't that not the same similar conversation? Two times in the Hall of Famer. Well, that's fair. Hmm? I ain't mad at that though. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not he, mad. At that. He's right Hall of Famer. He's Hall of Famer. I, I believe so. But what I'm saying, but like you talking about, see, he, Ross Strickland was never going to be. Matter of fact, he, I don't think he is. I don't think he is a Hall of Famer. Oh. I don't think he you is. might you 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 might be you might be right he might not be but that's awesome. that's the same premise right like how I view basketball may not be how everybody else views it but I really believe Ron Strickland was a better basketball player than Steve Nash but the record not gonna show it the the accolades not gonna show it he don't have no no um 
Okay. Somebody was telling me you're up in New York City Hall. <laughs> New York City Hall. That's so different. You see what I'm saying, bro? Like, <laughs> wow, that is so oh, But yo, okay, okay. But here's the here's the thing, right? And we get to this all the time. And I was and I was telling I was telling Lito, some of this is race related. Some of this, it, it's a lot of shit involved here that you really gotta really gotta unpack, <laughs> right? Like this I, fucking um. Uh fuck who was who was in my head that got a like like that has a ridiculous bat. I, I mean I know like Stefan Marbury. Here's one. Stefan Marbury in regards to talent, any any of the guards at his time, J Kidd, Steve Nash, yeah, I, I I mean like none of them were more talented than Stefan Marbury. Now, nope. now Stefan had some things, you know, he had some he had some things, you know, some labels. Through the media and off the court, I, and I ain't talking about him getting in trouble or anything like that. I'm talking about in regards to his relationship with Larry Brown, so on and so on and so forth that stood in his way. I just it's it's hard to grade this. J.R. Smith, bro, is one of the most talented dudes to like when we're talking about can do it all. Yeah. How do you how do you how do you grade that when it comes to what you saw somebody do on the floor, what you saw someone doing playing with four other dudes versus what someone can do individually with a basketball. So so is this more of a situation of is this so is this more of a situation of uh corporate basketball versus uh, versus what so how, how do I want to put this question? Like well, you know when I say corporate basketball, you know what you know what I mean. Like, I know what you mean. AI, they make an AI pull up in the shirts and ties and shit. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, I was asking, I was asking, so is this just a situation of corporate basketball versus quote unquote street ball? Yeah, I think that that all plays uh, a tie into this, right? You know, how, how I think Manu was one of the first Europeans, right, to right, outside of what's your boy from uh, the Chicago Bulls? Um, huh? Tony Kugos? Yeah, like Tony, like, but Manu played a different brand of basketball that was more acceptable, right? Like he had somewhat of the athleticism, but the sneakiness and the 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 I guess the overall intellect to get past you and, and make the flashy play, which we had never seen from a European. Most people try to bully Manu, but he would hit you with that pop pop or that one two and get past you like like whoa. Yeah, hold on. Like, with him. yeah, like you couldn't just you just couldn't play around with Manu. So I think that's why he was different. I just wouldn't these these you know these also Chris was talking about the labels before I cut out like these labels hindered a lot of careers right I, I don't even remember me coming up as a kid and I had to play a certain way to get on the court or I had to be a certain way to get on the court like the way I played at the park wasn't the play way I played with you know when I played in front of a coach or something like that like I it could I couldn't do what I wanted to do and all my partners would be like man why you gonna do this like man you, how I'm gonna get playing time? Like I think that at a higher degree, when you go talk about you know these NBA players, I'm pretty sure politics played a played a you know played a hand in this. So so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Who's who who you think you you take? I know you take uh, Jay Crawford over Manu. Who you take Jay Crawford versus Lou Will? Who? It's still Jay Crossover, bro. It's still Jay Crossover. It's still it's still Jamal Crawford. Uh, is is he the best six man like of, of course like, like of, of all time course. to you? I, I again I even said this in the article. I think he's one of the most gifted basketball players I have ever seen. Like naturally gifted at playing basketball. Yeah, I agree. if if he started and was given like the freedom of now, he can easily average twenty five, easily. Easily, if he were given the the green light to to just play basketball and no handheld, and they don't even hand check now, man. Jamar Crawford would easily average twenty five and be a multi time All Star, bona fide Hall of Famer. Then he would go to the bench and still be able to do. Bro, dude had fifty points in his last game. Damn. Like, <laughs> like, Damn. like we we talk about Kobe's, but bro, like he could still do it now. Why no? Why nobody brought him back? I think it's the era. I I think to me, if he was, if Jamal was born ten years later, 
and we was and, and we was talking about this earlier. I, I think that's what's standing like away from him. The freedom for certain guys like that wasn't appreciated in the same way that it is today. People have gotten older. We have more we have more coaches that come from those eras that respect and seen those guys play. There were teammates of some of those guys. Like, bro, like <laughs> Teron Lou had cornrows. I mean, it just, it just, it's just, it's just different as time has went along, and maybe, and maybe that's what's in. But I, I wanted to have, and Lito, I, I have to get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to have this conversation just based off the fact what even, even if I don't agree, I think that there's an argument for Jamal. It shouldn't be dismissed. It should, it should not be dismissed. Like there, you got to sit through the full conversation of it. Guilt and, and and I think for guilt, and I don't know. I haven't listened to the whole to the whole episode. I don't know if it was simply about that. that. That was probably just part of the show or whatever. But I think even even for Gil, you need a full episode, a full thirty minutes, a full hour to break down the whole aspect of that versus just having to put it into like two minutes and being like, oh, okay, well, you know, here's here's why. So, I can see that. Oh, man, good, man. Um, you got anything else? I'm I'm, I'm nah. good. There, there is no manual disrespect here. Believe me, there is no manual. We love both of them, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just... Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So Lou, Lou Will is the the goat in two two different ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> nah, man. But man, this is this is gonna rant cast. This is uh, this is Lido's rant, man. That's why my dog pulled up looking like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, Stone Cold, bro. That that that, that shirt. I, I, I might have to change my name back. I used to I used to go by Stone Cold Reed Austin. Come on, man. Yeah, that's that that's almost worse than Timothy. Timothy. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, <it's> not- <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna tell you how I told him a nigga try to steal my name, but he he didn't even acknowledge that. It's all good. Oh, and, uh, and until you make Lido, until you make put that shit on part two, bro, it's not. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man, we out, man. <laughs>